and welcome to season two, episode two of Talking Element. I'm your host, not Michael Reed, otherwise known as Michelle G. And it's an exciting time for us here at Element. We're in the Songs of Ascent, looking at 15 psalms that the Israelites would have recited and sung together on their pilgrimage to worship together. And in addition to that, we're looking at how those psalms are so relevant to life today and how they intersect with our stories within community that's transformed by the truth of who Jesus is. Mm. So my guest here today is Judy Lees. Judy, thanks so much Good for morning. joining us. Why don't you share a little bit about yourself? Um, I am Judy Lees. <laughs> I have been with Element for probably about, I think about 10 years now. Um, I am a co-leader along with my husband and a few others in our GC um, and also a co-leader to a wonderful woman in women's Bible study. Really enjoy encouraging others to um, follow Christ. Oh, hmm. well, we're so glad you're here with us today. So before we dive into the conversation, um, this sermon looked at Psalm 121 mm -hmm. specifically. So I actually wanted to share that and then we'll kind of go from there. So Psalm 121, this is the message translation. I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from mountains? No, my strength comes from God who made heaven and earth and mountains. He won't let you stumble. Your guardian God won't fall asleep, not on your life. Israel's guardian will never doze or sleep. God's your guardian right at your side to protect you, shielding you from sunstroke, sheltering you from moonstroke. God guards you from every evil. He guards your very life. He guards you when you leave and when you return. He guards you now. He guards you always. So I think that's such a beautiful psalm, just speaking to God's trustworthiness mm -hmm. and the ways he he really walks with us at each step. He never leaves us to our own devices, or our own abilities or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, how, how does that Psalm strike you? You know, I was looking over that verse and I, and I love how he looked up to the hills. As I get to that point of wanting to speak to God, especially from the heart, it's almost like you not really look up, but you, you, you close your eyes and you visualize God. Mm -hmm. And then even the part of um, him being, what was that about the shadow and how that shadow, shielding you. Uh -huh. yeah, shielding you and how that shadow is so close to us for, for what we call evil and for what we call harm. We may have to go through that, but yet he is, he is there with us. Right. Alongside of us. Right. I like where Aaron took it in his message where he talks about, you know, God is not trustworthy based on our circumstances, mm -hmm. maybe the absence of hardship or suffering, but really it's our trust is founded in the character mm -hmm. of who Jesus is. And sometimes that comes to light in the midst of hardship right. and suffering, right? Mm -hmm. That's where that's exposed. So I was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing maybe how that speaks to you, the, the meaning of trusting in who God is in the midst of hardship knowing that no matter what the struggle is, I know God is present with me. Even um, I think of this time where I was at a place of trust not too long ago, probably the beginning of this year, where I was sitting with my GC, it's very clear to me, and saying that I am in a place that I trust God so much that I am willing to stand before you all and say that I'm trusting God in whatever He has for me and that I'm willing to uh, submit to that and to be okay with that and to almost be excited about that, mm -hmm. which is seems kind of weird or odd, but um, to, I think to have that trust is such a gift. Mm -hmm. and. So I came to a struggle of what I thought at the time was lack of sleep. So lack of sleep, so that's what you thought it was initially. What did that kind of evolve into then for you? 
that lack of sleep became an issue and has been an issue for years. In actuality, the lack of sleep was also manifested from anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so just this year, it came to a head um, where was in, unable to um, have conversations with people because I could not um, mentally handle anything incoming. Mm -hmm. um, I could not watch TV, which was a good thing. <laughs> uh, I could not be on my computer. I could not be on my phone, um, which even then I felt God in my presence because He was taking away things for me to be just with Him. The only thing that I could do was truly walk <laughs> and listen to music. So it was a place that I had to be in to be encouraged. In that, I was continuing to meet with my GC family, which is truly a gift to me. They were there alongside of me, not knowing what was going on with me because I was not sharing. I could not talk about myself. They were very um, compassionate. Thank you for sharing that. So tell me, what, what did you learn or maybe understand in a new way about God's character just in the midst of that struggle mm. when it was just you and Him mm. and those distractions removed? I think my understanding of God's trust has just grown. I know I'm not fully fully grasping it and won't until we are with him, but I'm grateful for that deeper understanding of that. Mm -hmm. So what, what I enjoy exploring about this topic of trust is how I see it like in two dimensions, right? There's our trust in who God is, our, our vertical trust, if you will, and how that interacts with the way we trust other people. Mm -hmm. And I see that just play out so well in the context of gospel community, right? And how that understanding of who God is just provides this foundation for vulnerability. Knowing that God is trustworthy and also my trust in knowing who I am in Christ gives me a, a more sense of um, boldness it gives me a sense of almost the whole thing of what can man do to me mm -hmm. if God is for me. Mm -hmm. And so for me to share my story is in a way very freeing because it doesn't matter what other people think mm -hmm. about me. And I know I, I care about what they think about me, but it really doesn't matter. So, and we're all sinners, saved by grace. So why not be more transparent? Mm -hmm. Because in that transparency is when somebody comes to know us better. It's when we come to know God better because we see what he has done. So I think transparency is such a beautiful thing and honesty. I mean, we can we can set thing, things aside and um, and not share, but then we are missing that opportunity. Mm -hmm. A question I've gotten often from talking with gospel community leaders is, you know, how do we how do we maintain or provide like an environment of safety and trust if we're mm -hmm. trying to be inclusive, right? We're a family on mission. We're trying to bring people in, and yet that changes the dynamic. You know, how do we, 
how do we be transparent with this ever shifting dynamic and but why can't we welcome that person in to our transparency because it's the same thing as sharing to those people who were there sure they can they can they can learn something about us and they can take it out of our community but then again whose approval are we after mm -hmm. Be I love that because it's it's again remembering who we are in Christ that's that's how I feel yeah no, I, I love that. I think you're right. I think there's a time for discernment, right? Sure. When, when people come into a group, but I think as believers, our whole identity has been transformed and that that's a constant, right? Regardless of who God may bring into our community or who leaves. Mm -hmm. And I think to cling to that identity mm -hmm. and to understand how deeply God you know, really values transparency and we certainly know the scriptures are brutally honest right right um, so and what have we seen in the scriptures I mean it's not this rosy picture mm -hmm. I think about when Paul says you know we preach Christ crucified and just how how stark and how ugly of an image that is and yet that entire image sums up just how vast God's love is for us and that same mm -hmm. love is what is the foundation for our trust in him exactly and again that that it all interweaves of if God loves me so much, then do I really, I can, I do care about what people think of me, but deeply, who, who more so can I trust whose love will never leave me? Judy, thanks so much for being with us today and for sharing part of your story. You're really welcome. appreciate it. My pleasure. And our hope is that for those of you watching or listening, that you will come to understand and know deeper trust in who Jesus is and that that will transform your degree of transparency with those around you. Mm -hmm. And next, I'm going to invite Michael Reed back on so we can talk a little bit about gospel community. Hi, Judy. Thanks for sharing. I was off camera. So this is nice. Miss your seat? No. <laughs> yes, actually. I would miss my armrest. <laughs> it is pretty nice. I'm, I'm liking this. <laughs> That's right. So you said something in the middle of that. You yeah. said we are a family of servants. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to Did I say that? Yeah, you did. No. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that. So so what is a gospel community? I wanted to kind of end on this. So we've talked a lot about gospel communities and mm -hmm. for those who may be watching who don't know, what, what would you guys say? We are a family of servants. We're servants of Jesus. And I think with that, we're missionaries. We're sent people to go out into the world and to proclaim the good news of who he is and what he's done. And I think in conjunction with that, we enjoy kind of this transformed sense of what it means to be family. You know, we all come from families, some more broken than others, our own experiences. And yet, I think gospel community is a preview of what the kingdom of heaven is as far as a group of people truly centered on what it means to live out the gospel. And I think it's just a great uh, opportunity to have that, that body of believers as a family that we can go to. We can call them up for fun times. We can call them up for hard times um, to pray together, to play together, to have meals together. Um, I am all for gospel communities. I, I appreciate it. So in the handbook, which you can download the handbook, mm -hmm. I will actually include the link this time, <laughs> uh, which I forgot to last week. Uh, you have the section on page nine. So why gospel communities? Gospel communities help people truly know others and be known. Um, and then goes on and talks about that. Two, gospel communities help empower believers to do the daily work of ministry. Three, gospel communities allow for the connection of scripture to real life and gospel communities help allow for more people to be reached with the good news of Jesus. There's more, but those are kind of our top four uh, reasons why we long for gospel communities. And then in chapter two on page 11, gospel communities, a group of people committed to Jesus, to each other and to the city in which they live in sharing a gospel transformed life together 
This community blesses their city through sharing the good news of Jesus and inviting others to join in the work of the kingdom. And I think it, yeah, I think it's done through seeing each other, seeing that we are a family uh, that's sharing life together. You know, it's not this weird like commune that we go and live on, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but but it is this. We we open our lives more than we probably naturally want to. Um, we share aspects of of our homes and and aspects of our lives with each other. You know, we share our stories. We we share our 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 possessions and our our, our things and and our our time and our space and and what is happening in our lives ultimately we are known because of that we're we people get to know who we are uh, and we get to know others um, and i really appreciate the question you asked in in this interview of what what does it begin to look like when when we invite others into that space do we just close off or can we begin to invite them into uh, spaces where we've created intimacy and, and, and honesty. And so I appreciated that question and, and that answer. So uh, hopefully gospel communities do that because um, they are a foretaste of the kingdom of God, right. right? God has invited and welcomed us back as his children. And that's an instantaneous thing. As mm -hmm. and all we have to do is put our faith into Him, and to trust Him. To trust Him <laughs> that He is who He says He is, our mm -hmm. Savior, and we are His children. And as the church, as as the bride of Christ, we are His children, adopted, and that is an already thing, mm -hmm. and that we get to be the family of God. And as gospel communities, we are the church. Mm -hmm. Now that is not the totality of the church, but that is a local expression. And that is a part of element that is a part of the global wide capital C church. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see a, in a granular level, level uh, that a gospel community is element lived out. Um, the Sunday morning is important, right? Sunday morning is, is a church of gospel communities gathered uh, for sacred spaces, for corporate worship, for um, uh, music and, and communion and teaching. tithing and teaching and equipping. And, and we can do a lot of other things too, like baptisms and, and uh, there's actually a good list in here. <laughs> Uh, pumpkin killing, pumpkin which killing. Is coming up. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and we can do meetups. Uh, there's other corporate uh, events. Judy does Bible studies on Wednesdays with Vicki. You know, we have a whole E family. We just did CTV. Like, there's a lot of things that we do, um, and and they're all great. And and some of them draw, some of them equip, mm -hmm. some of them send. Uh, but really, gospel communities uh, is a uh, a front door to where people right. can get to know the church, right. spend time with the church body uh, before ever stepping foot on the campus. And so uh, for me, that's how, that's a long-winded answer of what gospel community <laughs> is. It's, it's, it's a foretaste of the kingdom. You're not excited about it, are you, Mike? No. <laughs> Some days. Some days. <laughs> Some days. Preach it. Answer. <laughs> Some days it's a lot. Some days it's a lot. Some days it's, and it's it. It's messy. Yeah. It's messy and it's hard and it's, 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 um, it's a lot. It is. <laughs> but, but I'm excited where we're headed and and uh, excited to be faithful to as much as possible in what God's calling us to be. Mm -hmm.